So hi everyone. First of all, let me introduce myself to all of you, especially for the ones who are joining us for the first time in this session. This is Ashnat Kothari here. So uh, for all the classes, which you know, for all the papers which we teach so far, uh, there are two of us basically who are gonna take the classes. Uh, I'm gonna take classes for CM1, CM2, CS1, CS2, the paper A part, as well as CB1. My colleague Gunjan, she would be taking the paper B portion of the paper of you know CM and CS exams. Plus, she is also the faculty for CB2 as well as CP2. So, just to give you a brief introduction uh, regarding both of us, uh, starting let's say from Gunjan, she is a graduate uh, in Mathematic Honors from Jadavpur University. She has cleared twelve actual papers as per the old curriculum, where you know we had to clear fifteen examinations. And she has been teaching for close to four years now. And she also has, you know, corporate experience of working both in life insurance as well as general insurance. So that was just a brief background. In case of mine, I have completed my uh, graduation from Calcutta University, uh, economic honors. I have cleared, you know, again, 12 actual papers so far out of the 15 actual examinations. And uh, I also have close to one and a half years of experience of working in general insurance domain. And I have been teaching for the past six and a half years now. I started in May 2016. So close to six and a half years it has been. So that was just a brief introduction regarding both of us. In case you all would want to get deeper into it, you know, you can check our LinkedIn profiles just in case anyone is interested for that. So that was the first thing. Uh, now I hope the screen is visible to all of you. Eight pointers which we are going to discuss in today's session. Nothing paper specific, more about how we are going to go about the classes, what all are the important things, you know, all of you need to keep in mind and so on. Next part is the contact us section. So I hope all of you do have, uh, you know, the contact numbers of both me as well as Gunjan. So I guess we have added all of you to the general updates group for a couple of examinations. They haven't been created as of date. They would be in, you know, certain coming weeks itself. Rest for most of the papers groups over telegram have been made. I have shared the contact numbers of both mine as well as Gunjan there itself. So any doubts you might have anything else, you know, those two numbers are there. It's available both on WhatsApp as well as telegram. So that is for contact us section. Next thing uh, which I like to talk about is the exam dates as well as briefly on the examination format. Uh, so one request to all of you, uh, don't ask me, you know, when are the examination dates for any particular exam? That is something you can directly find on the website itself. So I'll just, you know, show it over here as well. You just need to type out IFO exam dates. You need to click on this particular result, exam dates, institute of top actuaries, and you'll find the entire set of dates for the examination over here itself. So these are the dates for the April 2023 session from IFOA. Note that uh, at time of recording of this session, these are the dates future and later on, you know, there might be a possibility that dates do change. So always use the IFOA website as the single source of truth. Don't rely on what we are sharing or, you know, any others are sharing over social media because they might get outdated at a future point of time. So the best place to check and confirm the examination dates is going to be the official website of IFOA itself. As for IIA, again, you can just, you know, uh, Google IIA exam date 2022. So there's an examination uh, session scheduled in the December session. Dates are there. Post that. Uh, the last time I checked yesterday, there had been no notification from IIA regarding when the next exams would be held post December. Whether it's going to be in March, April, May, July, we don't know. In 2022, we had three sessions in March, in July, and in December. In 2023, there is no official confirmation yet with respect to how many terms will be there or even with respect to in which months they would be held. So if you have any such queries, I'll just say, you know, always use Google. That's the best resource. It's the quickest way to get the correct answer. So this was just regarding the examination dates. As for format, for IFOA, exams are going to remain online home-based assessments. For two papers in particular, CB1, 
CB1 and CB2. Starting from April 2023 session, these exams are going to be proctored in nature and these are going to be in something called an OBA format. More on the specific details of exam format, you know, we are going to discuss that separately when we start with the classes for each individual paper. This is just an overall highlight Keep from IFOA, it's going to be home-based examinations. So online examinations, CB1, CB2 is going to be proctored. The rest of them, as per the existing notifications, these are going to be non-proctored, similar to the way they were being conducted in the year 2022 or even 2021. For IAI, they have communicated that they are intending to keep exams offline only. The December 2022 session is going to remain offline only. And we can expect that all the coming sessions are going to remain offline itself. So that is just overall regarding the exam format. Next part, uh, which I like to communicate, one of the most important parts of this particular section is with respect to class structure. So we are going to start with the classes, you know, uh, for April 2023 session primarily for IFOA and whichever session II holds post December, whether it's going to be in March, April, May, whenever. I mean, this particular term batch is going to be relevant for that as well. Classes are going to be held both on weekdays as well as weekends. We haven't decided the timings yet because it's the month of October. There are a lot of festivities around. So we haven't really fixed any timings from November onwards. We would be, you know, coming up with a certain fixed schedule. And obviously, in case we need to, uh, you know, hold any additional classes, we would be holding them as well. Now, here at Fanatics, uh, especially ones, you know, who are joining us for the first time, our primary focus is to ensure that all of you have extremely strong concepts at the same time in a position that you are being able to you know, solve all the questions so that it ensures that you do clear the examination as well. But initially, the primary focus is going to remain on a clarity of concepts. Now for that, whether we use the live classes to teach something or you know, teach any conceptual topic or whether we use it for paper B, whether we use it for solving questions which we give you for practice, which might be questions provided in the institute material, or these might be questions of past years or any other questions, or be it doubt clearing. There is no fixed thing that we are going to conduct, you know, let's say 10 classes to cover concepts, 10 classes for doubt clearing, 10 classes for paper B, nothing like that. Whatever is required to ensure that, you know, all of you who are studying regularly are equipped with all the concepts and in a position to, you know, solve exam style questions in an efficient time bound manner, we would be, you know, uh, doing whatever it takes. Now, it could be that for a particular paper in this session, more classes would be held. When I say classes, I mean the live classes, be it online or offline, more live classes could be held, which might be covering the concepts, you know, or it could also be that most of the classes are focusing on paper B part. Or it or could also be where, you know, most of these classes are where we are solving past year questions or doubt clearing sessions. So honestly, over the last two, three years, where, you know, most of the students are joining us in online mode or through video recording modes, and a large chunk of you all have day colleges or are working, and it might not be possible for you all to attend the live sessions, you know, uh, whenever they are held on weekends or even, oh, sorry, on weekdays. So... The thing is, don't get fixated, you know, ki whether we are going to take 50 live classes of two hours each or 30 classes, whatever is required to ensure that you are fully prepared, you're going to do that. So a lot of students, when they're joining us for the first time, they ask us how many hours of classes are going to be there. There is no honestly answer for that. In certain sessions, we might have taken 50 classes of two hours each in certain you know, uh, particular session, we might have taken just 20 classes of two hours each, but it ensures that whoever, you know, all of you are studying regularly, you would be in a position where all your concepts are clear. There shall be no lack from our end with respect to completion of syllabus or with respect to us not providing you with relevant content, which, you know, stops you from studying in a time bound manner. So that is not the case. So I will say, do not focus on these superficial things, ki whether we are giving you 50 classes of two hours each or hundred classes or 10 classes. Our ultimate aim is that you have the necessary concepts in place. So, you know, it could be that for a paper CM1, we might hold, let's say 40 classes, just a random number. Whereas for CS2, let's say we just hold 30 classes. 
So it doesn't mean we're not focusing on CS2. It depends upon the number of students we have in a batch, whether they are working or whether they are studying, whether they are attending the live classes or not. Because initially what we have experienced is most of you do join the live classes uh, at least for first two, three weeks and post that it exponentially keeps decreasing. The moment we expect you all to come prepared for the classes, most of you for some or the other reason might be valid reason are not prepared and therefore you start dropping out from the live classes. So after a point of time, it happens that even in a batch size of 40 or 50, maybe just one or two of you are attending the live sessions and none of you are attending it. So after a point of time, it might happen that, you know, no further classes are held to teach the concepts because I mean, you all are getting access to the recorded content as well. And since every one of you might be interested to go at your own pace, then that would be there. In those circumstances, the live classes would be focusing on doubt clearing, question solving and so on. So that was the first thing I wanted to highlight you all. You don't get fixated on this, whether we are holding three classes a week, five classes. In certain weeks, we might hold, you know, classes every day. Like initially, we are going to keep the classes almost on a daily basis for the next one or two weeks. Post that, there would be certain festivities in October. So there might be no classes for one week or two weeks. There might be certain weeks where, you know, uh, most of the colleges might be having their semester examinations. So the classes might not be held there towards New Year, all these times, you know, uh, the classes might not be there. So don't get fixated. Just be assured, uh, probably more than you, we are more interested that all our students are perfectly prepared and they do extremely well in the examination as well as, you know, later on, be it with respect to their job interviews or while working in a corporate domain as well. So this was regarding the class structure. Next thing which I'm going to highlight is regarding Fanatic software. So for a lot of you, you know, you sometimes do encounter issues with respect to how to download our software, so on. So I'm just going to show you all a live demo with respect to downloading of our software in the laptop. As for the Android mobile version, it's a different thing altogether. I shall be taking it separately. Very few of you have opted for the mobile version to view the classes. So there's a different way of that. Right now I'm focusing on the laptop version, which a majority of you have opted for. So I would be sharing a link with all of you uh, on the WhatsApp chat itself. So this is the particular link which I have right now. Uh, this is the particular link. You just need to click on this. You can open WhatsApp web on a laptop and you just need to click on this particular link. Once you open this link, you will see a particular file getting downloaded. It's not much in size, around 51 MB only. So let's wait for this to get downloaded. And you can maybe click on show in folder. The file hasn't got completely downloaded yet. That is why it's showing CR download. So now if I just refresh it, it comes out as Fanatic software file. You need to click on this. Some of you might get this dialog box. Some of you might not get it. Once you are getting this dialog box, click on more info and then run anywhere. And once you do that, you will get an option to extract. Now, please keep in mind the path where you're extracting because a lot of you do click on extract, but do not check the default path for your extraction. So in my case, it's going to be downloaded in the downloads folder. In your case, it could be something else. So just see to it where you are extracting it. For simplicity, you could just put it as desktop itself so that it's on your main desktop. Right now I'm doing it on downloads. I click on extract. It just takes a couple of seconds and then I see a particular folder named Fanatic Software folder. You click on this, you get various files. Only two files are of interest. First is this particular video, instructions, how to activate course and watch. So it's a particular video which we have made, which will assist you in getting uh, with the installation of the setup. So do watch this carefully. Post that content browser is the main file which you need to use to access anything. 
be it videos, be it documents, PDFs, study materials, anything. You do not need to click on any other file. All the other things are supporting file. If you click something like PDF view or doc view, you might get some error message. Ignore that. It is, you know, it is none of, uh, it doesn't require only. You just need to focus on content browser. You click on content browser and you go with the next steps. Something which is explained in this particular video itself. Now it could happen that once you click on content browser, you know, everything might get closed and you might see that this content browser or PDF view is not showing anywhere in this particular folder. This happens because your antivirus might be deleting these programs or in even in case you don't have an antivirus, Windows Defender automatically, you know, deletes this file. So if this is the case, then you can simply Google out how to add these files to exclusion list and do add a content browser and PDF view to the exclusion list of your antivirus. Now, this is something which is specific to the antivirus, which you're using. So it's not something which our tech team will be able, you know, be able to support with you directly because there is no common solution. It depends on the particular antivirus being used. So this is something you can simply Google it yourself, how to add files to exclusion list, do add content browser and PDF view to the exclusion list. This is for only ones who just see this particular files getting vanished away. And if you see these files getting vanishing away, click on the link again, extract everything and start, you know, right from the scratch itself and make sure you do save these in the exclusion list in case your antivirus is deleting it. So this was regarding the Fanatic software. Also, next thing which I would like to highlight is, uh, do make sure that you are marking emails through which we are going to share certain resources with you or maybe certain other communications as important. You can again Google this, you know, how to mark a particular email ID important. This just ensures that you are, let's say, separately notified whenever you receive a particular email or any particular mail from a particular email ID. At times it could happen the emails which you are sending out, it lands in your trash. So just keep in mind that you do mark certain email IDs, be it from IAI, be it from IFOA or be it from either me or Gunjan. And, you know, just make sure you do mark it as important. The process of that, you can easily Google that and get that as well. We are going to have certain study groups over Telegram. So for all the papers, one group will be something called a general updates group where uh, only me or Gunjan can post that is basically to highlight the class timings, the studying technique or any other, you know, important piece of information relevant to the examinations. So all of you would be getting added to it post to enrollment. Then separately, there would be doubt group for each paper as well. Like for CB1, CB2 and even CP2, these have just, you know, let's say one part, there is no paper A or paper B part. So there is one group for this. For other four papers, which we teach currently, which is basically CM papers, CM12 and CS12, there are going to be two different doubts group. One each for paper A and for paper B. This will just ensure that, you know, doubts are not intermingled together. Students who are focusing on paper B can go to that group, can find the various doubts posted by other students and can refer to solutions as well. And if they have any other new doubts, they can, you know, post them 24 into 7. So for any sort of academic doubts you have with respect to the paper you're preparing from us, please post your doubts in these groups itself. Feel absolutely free to ask any doubts. Nobody is here to judge you. Even if you feel a doubt is silly, please do make sure that you are asking it to us. We are extremely open to doubts. So a lot of you are reluctant to post doubts in the group because you might have you might feel a bit awkward uh, that other students might see your doubts. They might judge you because if doubts are very silly. Please don't think anything. Your main objective should be to get your concepts clear. And for that, whatever doubts you have, feel absolutely free to post them. Do not think about you know what other students are thinking because we are here to take all your doubts. So feel absolutely free to do that. Please don't share it with us over WhatsApp or on personal chat because it's very difficult for us to keep a track there. It, it could happen that we have seen a particular message of yours asking the doubt over WhatsApp personal chat. We might be in some other work that time and then it just, uh, you know, gets up out of our mind and later on 
we don't even know where to go and look at for the pending doubts. In case you are posting them in the group, so we do have a complete track which doubts are pending from our end to clear and so on. So please use the doubts group for any doubts you have across the entire period. Just keep one thing in mind for the last two weeks or so, once the IFOA examination starts, we are going to disable the feature where students can post because these exams are open book in nature. Students could ask questions during the exam in the group itself. So just to ensure that no such activity is there, we would be disabling the option to post anything on the doubts group once the IFO examination starts. That is the case. And also please keep in mind, we are not going to help you during your examination. Before your examination, all the support you need with respect to your preparation, we are going to be there. But during the examination, we are not going to be there. So please don't ask us. Do not ask any of our other students as well to give you with the examination paper 30 minutes before your time slot or any such thing. So please uh, do ensure that you are within the assessment regulations and you do not resort to any activity which is against the assessment regulations be it for asking for papers before examination time, colluding with other students or any such activity. Also keep in mind, there are a lot of public groups over Telegram, which I've come across where students actively share uh, resources, which acted, uh, you know, gives out. It's not legal to share any of these resources. Do not be involved in receiving or transmitting any of these resources over public groups because the members of acted, you know, or IFOA might be there in these groups and they could take certain action against you, which could be either legal action or professional action. Also, certain of you might be involved or might know students who are involved in, you know, collusion, cheating during examinations, sending questions to the group, asking answers. Uh, we strongly suggest you to not, you know, uh, I mean, please don't be involved in any such activity. If you are studying from today till examination regularly, you yourself will be completely prepared for the paper. Please don't use any of these tools because there are high chances you would be caught. And if you are caught for collusion, you might be banned for around two years from giving examinations. And certain employees have started, uh, you know, uh, you know, rejecting uh, from, you know, recruiting candidates who have been banned either by IFOA or II. So just to clear one exam by a couple of marks, do not resort to any such unethical activity because there are high chances that you would be caught and strong action will be taken, you know, by the relevant institutes against you. So also on this, on the general updates group, uh, we would be sharing certain links as well through which you can find all the data sets related to paper B part or even if it's for CP2 examination or something else. So please do check all the messages whenever you're joining us and being added to the general updates group. Please make sure that you are reading all the messages right from the beginning. We keep on deleting certain redundant messages. Like if you have shared the link of a particular class, post that class, we delete that. So that for students who are joining us later, they have very less messages to read and those are the very important ones to read. So uh, we won't tolerate any excuse later on that you did not check the message in the group and something. We expect you to check the general updates group at least once every day so that you do are updated with all the latest information. Along with that, we do share all the important uh, notifications, guidelines, which IFOA or IEA might release through either our LinkedIn or, uh, you know, Fanatics LinkedIn channel, uh, Fanatics LinkedIn page rather, or even through our Fanatics Telegram channel. So I hope that all of you have subscribed to that. Uh, for most of you, I do ask them at outset only to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as Telegram channel so that any important information we post or any other important video we post, you all are updated with respect to that. So please keep that in mind. So this was regarding point six and point seven, where we expect you to you know, check groups. Last point is with respect to syllabus completion. So the latest we intend to complete the syllabus is by the end of February. Exams are starting broadly from second week of April. So at least six weeks before examination, we are targeting to complete the syllabus. That is like the deadline. And we hope that we would be in a position where we are covering the syllabus. Probably let's say in the first 
a few weeks of February itself and not towards the end of February. So that the last six, eight weeks you have completely to yourself so that you can revise things, practice more questions, work on areas, you know, where you all find difficulty. And again, more importantly, solve past year papers under examination conditions. So this was regarding the highlight. Uh, one more thing I would like to add is a lot of you uh, are inclined towards, you know, good packaging in terms of having a lot of mock papers, revision notes, revision classes or any such thing like that. Uh, I mean, we have been teaching for a very long time. We have a cumulative pass percentage of, you know, more than 80% in the last six years. We have got students who have secured all India ranks one. So please trust our process. Uh, we are not into fancy stuff. I mean, you know, we'll give you, we'll say we are giving you 20 mocks, 30 mocks, and you're not even completing the basic concepts of a chapter. There is no point for you all to have access to 10,000 questions, but not even solving 100 of them. So the first thing which you all should target for is whatever past your questions are there, whether you are appearing from IFA or II, you can use both the institutes. Target completing those questions first thing before starting to do anything new. Focus on completing all questions from IFOA and II between 2005 and 2022, along with those given in the material itself. Once you're done with that, and trust me, I don't know any student so far who has completed everything from material as well as all questions from IFOA and II from 2005 to 2022. Even students who have secured 90 plus marks from IFOA or have secured all India rank one, none of them have completed so many questions. So before you get out upon, you know, whether we'll be having uh, different questions to practice from which we are giving, first complete what the institute has provided. We also would be conducting mock examinations on a regular basis. Initially, these are going to be part wise for a couple of chapters, first four, first five chapters, so on. And later on, there are going to be full length mock examinations. And before you start with any new paper, first you solve the past year papers. If you are appearing from IFOA, complete all papers from 2005 to 2022. If you need more papers to practice, pick the past years from IIA. If you are done even with that, then come to us. We'll give you even more further questions to practice from. But the first thing you should do is practice these papers. Instead of relying on, you know, free mocks available here and there before that focus on what is provided by the Institute itself, because there is a tendency more so in II for past your questions to get repeated. So those are the first questions which you should be solving before trying to attempt any other new question. So please keep that in mind. If this is the first thing you should be targeting on, you will be getting ample of questions, be it for paper A part or even paper B part. So first complete with what we have provided to you. And then maybe once you're done with all of them, you could ask for further questions to practice as well. But first complete, you know, the things which we give on, because those are the ones which have produced results over the last six years and so, and have helped students to develop very good concepts and also be in a position to score extremely well in the examinations. So this is what I had from my end. Paper specific details, we would be having separate classes where we would be introducing paper CM1, CM2, exam pattern, number of chapters, whether topics are independent or not. So those are something which I'm going to deal with separately. This particular session was more of how we go about our classes, what all, you know, uh, main things you need to keep in mind. Another thing, uh, please keep in mind that our availability would keep on reducing as the exam date approaches. This is because, you know, it's just two of us who take classes for all the seven papers. And some of you, even after repeated uh, reminders, have a tendency to, you know, study towards the end only. So the quantum of doubts which we get as the exam date approaches, it increases. And right now with exam dates from IEI and IFOA being extremely different, it could be that when IEI holds the examination in December, during the last one or two weeks of November, we might be extremely busy. So our response time might increase during those times. So please be patient. And similarly, during April term, it could be that, you know, we are also sitting for our actual examinations. We also need to prepare. I mean, all the students are coming up with their doubts at that time. So our expected time to respond, you know, at that time will be extremely high relatively. Right now, certain times we might be responding immediately. 
within an hour, within two hours, and on certain days, it could be that you know we take a couple of days to respond to you. In case we would be out for any of personal reasons, we would be informing you beforehand in the groups itself, so that you also can plan your preparation accordingly. Whatever doubts you might have, you would know beforehand whether you know either of us would be unavailable to take your doubts and or or not. So we will keep you informed in case you know we would be uh, unavailable for certain personal circumstances or for certain other reasons. Just that we expect all of you to study regularly. Specifically, ones who have a tendency not to study during this time, just study the last one or two months. We would be not taking the doubts purposely because we don't want to uh, kind of motivate such sort of studying wherein the students are not studying for the first four or five months. Especially, you know, ones who aren't working, ones who are working have different constraints. So we understand that. But for college students, if you're not studying regularly and you think you will just study in the last one month and expect us to clear your doubts, then we would purposely not be doing so because we don't want to promote that sort of uh, behavior. We expect you all to study regularly. If you are studying regularly, following our basic instructions, trust me, we both are going to be there to help you in any way possible. So yes, that was it. Now I'll just take any doubts you all might have.